Well, we're waiting for the eventual collapse of human society. How about I show you a little project I'm working on? This is a clock. It's from a CrossFit gym. Uh, it's made by Muscle Driver USA. And if you go to their website, you'll notice that they're no longer in business. So that's not helpful. But anyway, the clock itself works fine. Uh, the problem is the damn remote. Some of the buttons work, and some of the buttons don't. And as a result, the clock is rendered pretty much useless. So you probably guessed it's not just a clock, it's a stopwatch, counts rounds, I don't know exactly what, I'm not much of a sporty spice, but it does a bunch of exercise-y things for you when you're uh, working out. The guy has three of these clocks, and I thought at the very minimum I could try and fix the remote. Uh, but really what he wants is to be like the rest of the cool CrossFit gym owners on the block, and that is to have these clocks actually Bluetoothable, so that their customers can actually control them with their phone. And that, to me, sounds like a pretty damn good challenge. So let me bring you up to speed as to where I'm at. Because this remote came out of a CrossFit gym, I was pretty sure that when I opened up the remote, I was just going to find it chock full of human gunk. Surprisingly, however, it was quite clean. A visual inspection did not turn up anything seriously wrong with it, so I got out the multimeter and prodded around a bit and determined that one of the tracings was broken somewhere and I couldn't quite figure out where. But it was possible to jumper that break by simply soldering a wire onto the chip and then using the wire as the contact point. I think you got her. So let's give it a try. So I know this button up here is a no good. So if we get a little beep out of that thing, there we go. So that's how we can circumvent this situation. So now that I could press all the buttons on the remote, it was time to capture and store all the infrared codes that the remote could produce. To do that, all you need is an infrared receiver and an Arduino. This is a sketch from Adafruit that just reads raw IR codes. And the reason we're using the raw format is because this one is not a standard uh, remote. The codes coming out of here are not NEC or Sony or whatever. Did a bunch of button pushing and stored each of the IR codes in their own tidy little array and saved those to a file. Now all I needed was a plan. Okay, here's my half big plan. We write a Bluetooth application for phone that sends Bluetooth information to our little box here. And this contains, you know, an Arduino or something similar that's going to receive those commands, and then it'll translate those commands into infrared commands and send them to the clock. Basically, this thing is acting like a relay. Seems like it'll work to me. At this point, I'm feeling pretty damn smart with my bucket full of IR codes and detailed plan of action. So it's a good thing Android Studio came along to return me to my basal state of feeling like an idiot. For someone who's always said that if you know one programming language, you know them all, uh, Java really had me tied in knots for quite a few days. And that's basically, I think, because it's an object-oriented language, and I'd never done anything like that before. But eventually, after staring slack-jawed enough documentation and tutorials and videos of this kind of stuff, I managed to get enough of a grasp on it to make what I needed to make. At its core, Java is basically just another language, but all the object-oriented layers on top of it make it really confusing. The dirty little secret about object-oriented programming is that every little piece of code that you want to make has probably already been written for you, and all you're doing is stitching together those little pieces of code that other people have written into your own code. In the old days, we called that cheating, but uh, now it's the thing to do, and there's maybe a good reason for that, because why bother reinventing the wheel? So eventually it looks like the app is going to come together. I've got a Bluetooth backend that seems to work okay, and uh, now I'm just building up the menus and buttons and all that fun interfacey stuff. But I'm easily distracted by shiny objects, so I thought I'd go back to the hardware side a bit and have a, a go at getting that to work. Geez, you know, I can't quite put my finger on it, but something about these Arduino projects always makes me feel a little bit like a terrorist. So here we have uh, just an Uno, old, old Uno keeps chugging along and uh, attached to that we have a Bluetooth module this is an HC05 cheap 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 and uh, very easy to use 
So they'll just transmit and receive Bluetooth signals, so that's nice. We also have an infrared LED. This is a T-Cell 6400. And I picked that one because it uh, sucks back the power. It requires about 100 milliamps. And uh, it's got a good spread on it, so it'll be bouncing infrared off the walls, which is perfect. And because it takes so much power, and this only puts out about, I think, 25 milliamps, it's not quite enough to get a really good signal out of that. We've got a just a transistor here hooked up to the main 5 volts, and that's what's actually powering the LED. So that gives us enough juice for that. That's about it. Um, there's really, you know, there's nothing complicated about these things. They're so simple to make. So let's look at the programming side of this. This is where all those raw IR codes ended up. Each key is an array of numbers and each array I think is 135 numbers long. And we've got about 34, 35 keys here. So that's a lot of data. In fact, way too much for uh, the just the basic program memory of the Arduino. So there's a trick to that. If you wanna jam things in there, you can use this progmem command and that'll put it into, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it's another subsection of memory in the Arduino that you have access to. You only got about, I think 2K for programming on the Arduino and then there's some extra storage memory that you can access and that's how you do that. So I jammed all those in progmem and that seems to work just fine. So all we're doing, we were using two uh, external libraries, IR Remote for the infrared and software serial for the Bluetooth. Uh, you initialize them and in our main loop here all we're doing is waiting for Bluetooth signal and then it's going to interpret that signal and based on what character comes through it's going to send an infrared code using this function here. So it's again very easy to do. Once you get past this uh, trying to find a place to put your codes, it comes together pretty quickly. What else can I tell you about this? Pretty much nothing. So let's move on. And back to working on the Android app for a while. Most of it's just interface design at this point. Uh, there's some programming left, but not too much. If you've never tried this drug called programming before, you should really give it a go. I've been doing it since I scored my first pure hit of VIC-20 back in the 80s and never looked back since. It can be super addictive, however, so you may end up neglecting family, friends, and hygiene as a result. I don't know if they still do this anymore, but back in the day they used to try and get you hooked by actually giving it to you in school. In fact, we had a special room in high school filled with Commodore pets where you could just hook it directly to your veins. Critics, of course, said that BASIC was just a gateway drug to more hardcore languages, and it turns out, hey, that was true. Anyway, if you haven't tried it before, give it a go. It's never too late to start. Back to the hardware side, I thought I'd try and get a little more range at a Bluetooth module by soldering on an antenna. So this is cool. Uh, I just tested this out in a zero obstacle environment outside with nothing in the way, uh, with and without the antenna. And with the antenna, you get about an extra 10 meters of range with it. So that's pretty significant. I probably don't need to tell you this, but if you keep all your electronic doodads and kajiggers, you can uh, steal parts off them later. So I'm going after this little uh, plug here and get that out of there. There you go, good as new. Now that I've got all my components together, it's time to figure out how to fit this in a box. Solder a few things together. Test out the layout a bit. And try not to forget that I need a place for this thingamajiggy. Here is the final product. Uh, yeah, it's basically exactly what I said it was going to be. Got an external 5 volt jack, uh, place to program it should that become necessary. Antenna and uh, infrared LED poking out there. So, uh, let's just try it out, eh?
All right, so here's the app I built to run this little thing. Uh, it starts out with a, you know, a list of paired devices on your phone. If you don't have it paired, then you have to do that before you come here. And then you can just click on that. It will try to connect, and oh yay, we connected. So that's good. Now, this will bring you into the main functions of it if you pass the test of actually connecting to it. And there's, you know, a bunch of stuff. And I won't go through it all, but I will show that it does work if we hit the on off. There it goes. And there's a slight delay because, of course, you're relaying this stuff, right? So what are you going to do? Can't do much about it. All right. Well, I'll just show you some, uh, let's see here. Well, probably the most impressive thing is this custom program thing, so we'll show you that. Uh, you can put in the number of rounds you're going to do, how much time for work, let's say two minutes. If it's blank, it goes to zero, and rest, let's say, to 36, for example. And uh, that's selected. And then you can hit go, and what's going to happen is going to perform all of those commands. They normally be separate, so here we go. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Works damn good. So, uh, yeah, it's about 150 milliseconds in between each uh, event. Uh, each infrared event is how, about how low you can go. Any faster than that won't pick it up. So, uh, yeah, you can pause the program, and you can resume the program, and you can quit, which is what I'll do. So that's basically it. does a bunch of other stuff. Oh, this thing is, this thing, I don't know what the fuck, Fight Gone Bad. It sounds super cool. So Fight Gone Bad does some pre-programmed set of routines. I don't know what it is, but... Uh, it sounds like some sort of Capcom 2D fighter to me. <laughs> I like it. Anyway, <laughs> that's basically it. Uh, obviously, you're not going to build one of this exact thing because you don't have one of those gym timers, and chances are you never will. But you can take this basic technique and use it for any infrared device you have. All you have to do is write a little program, Build a little bit of hardware, and for example, you can control every infrared device in your living room with one app, right? From TV to VCR. You still have a VCR, right? It was an interesting little project, anyway. Thanks for watching. Cheers.